Yes, yes, so hell is here. Wow, this is our 25th Pentatonix reaction, one quarter of a century of Pentatonix reactions. This is an original of theirs, Love Again. This is the second original of theirs that I'm hearing. The first one was a live performance of Run To You, and I received recommendations of this song quite a lot, apparently because it's very different in style to Run To You. So it'd be cool to see the opposite ends of the stylistic spectrum of their original works. The lyrics, I checked out the lyrics just before this, and if you just showed me the lyrics, I'd bet my left arm that the music that would accompany them would be kind of somber, sad, slow, but every single recommendation pretty much that I got for this song said the opposite. So that's definitely interesting. Also in the lyrics, there's a line about running, which I think is quite funny. Two originals both mentioning running in one way or another. Other than that, and the fact that the thumbnail for this song looks pretty cool, I know nothing about it. This video was released in May of 2014, nearly a decade old. So I think let's just get straight into it. Taste the pain right on my tongue. No overcame to make me numb. Don't you worry cause the night is young. Dance until the morning sun. Morning sun. Morning sun. Morning sun. I am at a loss for words. Can't believe I let you pull me down to this place You stole my heart and soul Just to think that I would dry those tears from your face I played such a foolish game Feeling you were everything to me and more I don't mean to point the blame But baby, you hurt me to my very core You don't know why you Well, this is certainly different to anything I've heard by them. And Kevin as well. This is another example of Kevin needing to calm himself down. All right, this bit. Sorry. Kevin, calm yourself, boy. What is this? Absolute madness. <laughs> Utter insanity. All right, I think we're about halfway through. They seem to try to keep these songs for about three minutes. So let's just go over what we've heard there. Because it's so different, there's quite a few interesting things that I'd like to just talk about. Right from the off, first thing we hear, introduction into this piece of music, we're greeted with a nice little bit of harmonic unexpectedness. We start in A minor. Taste the pain right on my tongue. No overcame to make me numb. And then migrate immediately to the major version. And then back to minor. And then back to major for this repeated section. These chords that we're hearing on morning sun, they're pretty catchy, I think. We have homophony here, so the same words sung in the same rhythms at the same time, but we also have parallel movement in the top three parts in Kirsty, Mitch and Scott. Avi's different, he's keeping the same note, static, acting as the harmonic foundation. Scott is almost like Avi, he's not quite static. He does move up like Mitch and Kirsty, but in a much smaller interval. I'll show you the chords on the online keyboard. From bottom to top is Avi, Scott, Mitch, Kirsty. So they go up on more Ning, and on that Ning, Scott's part is by far the quietest part. But in terms of harmony, it's the most important. His part is here, and if we bring Avi's part up the octave, it creates this clash with Avi, albeit temporarily. We get this phrase morning sun, which is repeated, but getting shorter and shorter until it just cuts out completely. And then we come in bass, beat heavy. What a good job they've done of replicating this style dance music EDM. Also their chromatic descent down on Ning. 
That's a nice touch. Normally, it would just be like the same note repeated. Overall, I mean, we'll probably see it later, but this really is kind of the Kevin show. Without Kevin, the impact of this song would just be reduced significantly. And I like this bit as well. Think that I will dry those tears from your face. I like how they honor and emphasize the fact that they're still an a cappella group at core by removing any kind of beats at this point. Not just that, but they're also singing homophonically words. We don't have lyrics sung in a melody with the backing singers replicating instruments like you might often see in a cappella. They're all singing the same words. The emphasis is on the human voice. But then we do go back into this feel of supporting parts with a human melody on top. Except now the backing parts are singing ah, whereas before they were singing ooh. Can't believe I let you pull me down to this place. I mentioned a similar thing in my reaction to their Daft Punk medley. If you haven't seen that, do check it out card up here. That's probably the most similar thing to this I've heard by them in terms of musical style. But yeah, by changing the vowel sound, it not only adds a bit of variety between two musical sections that are otherwise quite similar, it's also this subtle notion of growing throughout the piece. If the vowel sounds that you choose later on are more open than at the start. Just a quick point on the outfits as well. I like how they've gone for this kind of hyper-futuristic rave aesthetic. I mean, Kirsty's outfit, for example, I've seen people dressed like that back in the university days, even with the steampunk goggles, but it's more the facial markings. Scott and Mitch's faces honestly wouldn't look too out of place at many music festivals these days, and the dots on Avi's face too, but it's more the markings on Avi's cheek and Kevin's face. They look like a, a hard drive almost. It's certainly eye-catching and obviously works very well for this dance rave aesthetic they've got going. So before a certain moment that we're about to here, we get a noticeable harmonic shift. Oh, I heard that and I'm wondering, okay, where's this going? Well, I should have guessed. Of course, Mitch. And to add to this overall changed effect that we've got here, we've got Avi implementing overtones above his upper bass register. And then, in a rather maniacally looking fashion, he slides down back towards the depths of that harmonic bass foundation. And going back to the point we just spoke about, about using a different vowel sound for variety, here they're combining the two, they're using both OO and AH. More of an AH this time, but they're alternating between AH and AH. This time though, they're staccato, they're disjointed, they're on the OFF beats, and they're contrasting Kevin's very strict ON beats. This creates this overall syncopated feel and it's much more energetic. Just a quick mention of Mitch's highest note. That is a top G, which is just below this top A. That top A is as high as your typical chorus that might be expected to sing. All right, this bit, very, very cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and say it's Kevin creating that low note because the note that we hear is an A an octave below this one. I know that this is something beatboxers can do. I don't know the anatomy behind it, but I have heard beatboxers do that before. They're also showing Avi though at this part and his mouth is moving in rhythm. So it could be him, but I, I think it's Kevin. Also, Avi does enter just after that with a humming part. So if Avi is doing that low A beforehand, then they've used multi-tracking at this particular moment. And then last point before we carry on, just on aesthetics again, very cool visual effects here. Very ravey, replicating that kind of scene pretty well, I think. All right, let's carry on.
Oh, that was different. That was different. I, d I don't want to use the word different, um, but I'm going to use the word different. Just something so dissimilar to, to what I've seen before. And within it itself, there were a kind of fusion of musical styles. I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit. But yeah, that was that was very, very cool. Very cool. I just love discovering all these different types of music. So thank you to everyone who leaves these recommendations for me. All right, let's go over that second half. So I like this bit. We get a quick come off, a nice break from everything, and then straight into a new section. <laughs> Firstly, the cross rhythms are, are great. Even just between Mitch and Kirsty and Scott, who are the ones singing the words here. Avi is with Kirsty and Scott rhythmically, but he's not singing any words. But even just Kirsty and Scott here, who who what were they singing? <laughs> Running, running fast, running through the night. Two phrases within one big phrase. Mitch also has that second phrase, through the night. Through the night. But Mitch's version is altered to create these cross rhythms between the two parts. The same format of the overall phrase is then repeated for the next overall phrase, which again is split into two smaller phrases. And this time they were singing, dancing, dancing, babe, dancing through the night, all through the night. But for that second mini phrase, through the night, now Mitch doesn't sing that. He's given the melody to Kirsty and Scott, and instead he's just repeating tonight, tonight, tonight. It's this theme of repeating an idea like we saw earlier before then changing into a new section. Also, Mitch's melody itself. It's at the perfect range for him to just freely switch between that chest and his head voice, kind of like mini yodeling. <laughs> And it creates this really cool effect, uh, almost like a futuristic effect, like we saw in their cover of Gold. But in Gold, they had to use technology to, to create a similar effect. In the original song, I mean. Speaking of effects, there were a few cases where Pentatonix implement really small, quick effects, just for, you know, just for a bit of extra something. Here's one example, listen to Kevin. See that very quick, and then back. And then again here, this one not so subtle. Scott, I'm gonna call it a dinosaur sound because it reminds me of small dinosaurs. <laughs> and is that a, a YouTube play logo on his thumb or, or is this just matching the paint on his face? He has like white and black triangles. All right, anyway, back to the music. Immediately after this, I think quite crazy. The synergy between Kevin and Avi, I always talk about it. Yeah, it's just great. It's just great. Kevin's part here, though, I'm not even going to try and comprehend how the human mouth can produce sounds like that. But then amidst all of that and the speed with which he's doing it, he's implementing hemiolas in the hemiola is when you have three beats fit into the space of two beats. So instead of one, two, one, two, you get one, two, three, one, two, three. But he's doing it in here. <laughs> It's in his own little like world of micro beats and obviously that contributes to the overall weird Futuristic lagging type effect that they have also enhanced by the video great video Which leads into a section that is similar in vain stylistically and structurally to what we've seen before with pentatonics Well at least what I've seen before because I've you know mostly done their older stuff And that is where in the second half they have a section where they bring in parts one by one layering them polyphonically Which then creates this nice little counterpoint <laughs>
The example I always refer to is Carol of the Bells, but to choose a more recent reaction of mine, uh, they did a similar thing in Cheerleader as well. In this case, it's not as obvious. The parts do come in quicker and they finish kind of homophonically as well. But thinking in terms of structure, this is a noticeable thing that they do do it in a fair few of their um, performances. It's like a pentatonics touch, a pentatonic schism. Another nice touch, this part here. <laughs> Being able to implement a strictly homophonic a cappella section, this time longer than previously. I mean, the whole thing's a cappella, but you know what I mean. It, it's just them singing words now. But why I'm pointing this out is because of the context of this song. This section is completely dissimilar to the rest of the song, but it sounds natural. It sounds like it belongs, it sounds in place. It's a bit bizarre considering the style of the music on either side of this section, which leads into another maniacal looking Avi moment. <laughs> I'm a teach you how to just before this final refrain. Yeah, that, that was very, very cool. Did not know what to expect. And that certainly was very different from their other original Run To You, which is the only other original I've heard by them. Thanks to everyone who recommended this. And of course, let me know down in the comments of other originals by them that you'd like to hear me react to in the future. As always, thank you very much for watching. Would appreciate a like and subscribe. If you enjoy my content and want to support me and join the Sahelis community, you can do so by joining the Patreon or YouTube memberships linked in the description below. And I will see you next time.